When I was a young man, I went to a Bible study and I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I remember that was the first time that I heard the full gospel preached. I don't have to be sick. I don't have to be poor. I don't have to be defeated by the devil, but I can live in the blessing of God. At Karis Christian Center, I would say that our number one goal is to get people to know Jesus. I believe that's the ultimate goal of the gospel. Whenever people leave the service, I'd rather have them leaving saying, man, Jesus is so great. I'm so in love with Jesus. I'm so in love with the Word. See everybody, the purpose that God has created them for fulfilled. Every born again believer ought to be a member of a church. I was raised in a traditional church, but I didn't understand the goodness of God. I didn't understand the full gospel, that God was for me, that God God wanted to bless me, that God wanted to heal me, that God wanted to help me in every area of life. We preach the full gospel where people can not only come to know Jesus, experience the grace of God, but they can begin to see the power of God manifest in their life. The teachings that we have received here that God wants me well. No, I don't have to be sick. No, I don't have to have anxiety. I don't have to have panic attacks. And we were just overwhelmed and grateful that God had brought us here. I believe that the church that Jesus is building is changing the world. As we're connected to a local body and submitted to Jesus Christ and submitted to godly leadership, that our influence actually becomes greater in the earth. There's so many ways that you can get connected with Karis Christian Center. You can get connected just by attending, you know, through receiving the Word of God. They can get connected online through receiving the message, enjoying the praise and worship, but they can also get connected in the youth, in the children's ministry, in our men's ministry, Karis Men, in our Flourish women's ministry. These ministries are changing people's lives. It's been a blessing to really thousands of people around the world as we've shared the gospel. And I want other people to find the same joy that I've found in receiving the goodness of God, but also sharing the goodness of God with others. Download the Caris Christian Center mobile app today. Day or night, you can send us your prayer requests where our team of anointed prayer ministers can pray over you. We also make it safe and secure for you to give or partner with this ministry so that you can give with peace of mind. You also have access to all the hundreds of hours of teaching right at your fingertips. So download the Caris Christian Center mobile app wherever you get your favorite apps today.
nothing that you shed your blood So I'm gonna live like my shame is gone I Won't be shackled to the way I was oh, I'm gonna live like my chains are gone Oh, I'm not 
Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing.
Praise the Lord. I have good news today. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead just as he said. Jesus is alive. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you and we praise you. We glorify you. We lift your name on high. Thank you, Lord, for all you have done for us. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Honey, can you run up? <coughs> Praise the Lord. Greet one another. Want to say hi to everybody online. Share with your friends. Let them know we're broadcasting today. Jesus is alive. So greet one another. It's great to have everybody. the Lord. It's good to see everyone. Good news. Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Praise God. So we want to tell you about a few things going on. Uh, this. Welcome, welcome the visitors. Welcome. Oh, well, you welcome. <laughs> Barbara knows what she's doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, he's excited. I just came we, to help her. We do have some special announcements and he's up here to help with that. And um, if this is your first time here today, can we just welcome all of our first time guests? <laughs> And everyone watching online for this very special day of celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We're so happy you could be a part. If this is your first time as a guest, we want to invite you to help yourselves to one of those connect cards that you'll find in the pocket in the chair in front of you. If you don't mind taking just a little bit of time and fill that information out, stop by the Connect Center in the foyer as you're leaving. We do have a gift we want to send home with you. Other helpful information about what's going on. And we want to remind everybody, pick up a bulletin if you haven't done so. There's lots of things in there. You can also go on the website, check that out. We literally have ministry going on all week long, and we're really excited. We want to just share about our midweek service on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. So we're so excited that we have a midweek service. And did you want Amen. to let them know we some things? Great, great children's ministry, uh, great youth ministry, and I'm teaching the adults I'm actually teaching 1 John right now. It's one of my favorite subjects, and I'm going to be teaching one of my favorite messages from 1 John chapter 2, verse 12 to verse 27, uh, this Wednesday night if you want to come and be here or tune in online. Praise God. Mm -hmm. But John had a revelation of the love of God, and it transformed his life. And if you get a revelation of the love of God, it will transform your life. So uh, tune in if you're watching online or come see us. Praise the Lord. And uh, I believe you'll be blessed. Amen. And good. For, there's good things going for the whole family. So I guess with that, um, it looks like we have a very special presentation. Again, just to continue to worship. Isn't it awesome? All around the world today, we are worshiping and celebrating Jesus Christ. And again, we have something very special here. Amen. Martha. Jesus, where were you? Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Martha, all is not lost. Lazarus will rise again. I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. I am the resurrection. And the one who believes in me will live even though they die. And the one who lives believing me will
will live forevermore. Do you believe this? Yes. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God who is to come into the world. Good. Where is your sister? Mary's at home. She hasn't left her room the past four days. We'll go and bring her here. Mary? Jesus is here. He's asking for you. Okay. Mary. <laughs> Lord, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. <laughs> Mary. Lazarus is only sleeping. Come, where have you laid him? Come and see, Lord.
Hallelujah. Amen. I hope you enjoyed that. Kids did an awesome job. Praise God. And I want to say a great big thank you to everyone who helps here, not only today, but on a regular basis. Most of you probably don't know this, but we actually have about 300 different volunteers that serve and help in different ways here in the church. And I, we couldn't do all we do without the help of our volunteers. So I want to say a great big uh, thank you to each and every one of you that help and serve and come and give in any way. Praise God. We love you and we appreciate you. God is so good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, if you have your Bible, uh, you can open it if you want to, to Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to be there in a minute. Uh, we're going to be reading from Ephesians 2, verse 1 through 5 to start. And later we'll read verse uh, 6 through verse 10. That is our text. But I want to go back for just a minute and talk about the last couple of Sundays. We've talk, been talking about surrender. And I've been specifically talking about identifying with Jesus in his death, burial, and resurrection. When you study the New Testament, specifically Paul's letters, there's actually seven aspects of identification with Christ. We, cru we were crucified with Christ. We died with Christ. We were buried with Christ. We were made alive with Christ. We were raised with Christ. We were, we were seated with Christ. And we reign with Jesus Christ. And when you begin to understand those things and identify with those things, it will transform your life in a very positive way. Praise God. When I was only 14 years old, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then I began to find out the, the secret of who I was in Christ. And it transformed my life in a very positive way. Praise God. That was 46 years ago, almost, amen, that I got baptized in the Holy Spirit and I began to understand who I was in Christ and it liberated me. It changed my life for good. And a lot of people are saved. I was saved in a tradi traditional church when I was only eight years old, but we were saved and very stuck. But when I fa got filled with the Holy Spirit and found out who I was in Christ, it completely changed my life in a very positive way. And I know it'll do the same for you. Now, of those seven aspects of identification that I talked about, the heart of those are the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that really is the heart of the gospel. And Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 and verse 4, he says, I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried and he was raised again the third day according to the scriptures. Praise God. So the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus fulfilled the scriptures. Amen. Old Testament prophecies prophesied of him and Jesus was fulfilling those. Now, about one-third of the scriptures about Christ's coming have been fulfilled. About two-thirds of them are yet to be fulfilled when Christ comes again. But we believe in the resurrection. And we believe that Jesus Christ is coming again. Praise God. Now, when we begin to look at this, I talked about how when we identify with the death of Christ, what that means. You see, if there is no death, there can be no resurrection. And Jesus talked about the cross. He talked about it in a number of places, but one of those places was in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 and verse 25. And he said, if any man is going to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. He says in verse 25, for whosoever will lose his life shall find it. And whoever, right? holds on to his life, is going to lose it. So, so when we begin to identify with Christ in his death, we also identify with his resurrection. Paul says this, if we be dead with him, we believe that we shall also live with him. Praise God. And so, so there's something that happens. Now, how do we identify with Christ in his death? One way that we talked about is we make a decision to surrender our lives to Jesus Christ, right? We make a decision 
to believe on Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Number two, we surrender our will, our thoughts, our plans, our ways to his will, his thoughts, his plans, and his ways. How many of you know that God's plan for your life is better than your plan for your life any day of the week? And, w- and when you surrender to Christ on the cross, when you identify with death, that releases the treasure of Christ in you. The second thing that we talked about last week, we talked about identifying with Christ in his burial. That's the very first time in over 40 years of full-time ministry that I've ever preached on identifying with Christ in his burial. What do we mean when we talk about identifying with Christ in his burial? Well, first of all, it means to relinquish control. When somebody's in the grave, they don't have any power anymore, right? And secondly, it means to lose our identity and find a new identity. Jesus said this in John chapter 12, except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it remains alone. But if it dies, it, it brings forth much fruit. It releases the power of multiplication, when we relinquish control. Now today I'm going to be talking about seven aspects of identifying with Christ in the resurrection. What does that really mean to us? And I want you to go there to Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to begin reading. We're going to read for right now the first five verses. Paul says this, And you hath he quickened, you hath he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Wherein, in time past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom we had our conversation or our lifestyle, in times of past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and of the mind, and we were by nature the children of wrath, even as others." But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has made us live together with Christ by grace are you saved. Now, the first aspect that I see of identifying with Christ in his resurrection is that we have brand new life in Christ. You has he quickened, you has he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. Before I came to Jesus, before I believed on Jesus, I was spiritually dead. You know, they did this play about Lazarus. And and when Jesus, you know, we read that in John chapter 11. Jesus says this in John 11, 25 and 26. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he who lives and believes on me shall never die. So before we came to Christ, we were dead. We were dead, spiritually speaking, because of Adam's transgression in the garden. The Bible says, by one man, sin and death came upon all men, for all have sinned. But even though we were dead, he who believes on me, even though he were dead, yet shall he live. You were made alive when you believed on Jesus. And he who lives and continues to believe on me shall never die. That's talking about spiritual life. That's talking about resurrection life that we have in Jesus. Paul says in Romans chapter 8 verse 10, If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is alive because of righteousness. Then he says in verse 11, we're alive because of righteousness, and if the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he will quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. When you believe on Jesus, you are made alive to God in the realm of the Spirit. Praise God. So so we receive the exact same Spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead comes to live on the inside of us as believers. 
And when you have the spirit of Christ in you, you don't have to live like you did before. That's what Paul's talking about. Before you were saved, you were dead in sins and trespasses. You lived like the world. You just served the devil. You served yourself. If it felt good, you did it. But now that you've been saved, you've got a brand new life. Some of these people talk about the good old days. I'm telling you, there wasn't anything good about it. I don't want to go back there. I don't want to live like that. Praise God. I have been born of God. I've been born again. I have a brand new life in Christ. Now, in verse 3, he says, when we live like that, we were by nature children of wrath, even as others. But today, we have a brand new nature. Not only, number one, do we have new life, we have a new nature, and we are alive to God. Romans 6, verse 11 says this, Reckon yourselves, in other words, account this done, to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God. Thank God we've died to sin and we're alive to God. We're not who we used to be, praise God. Our life has been changed by the very life of Jesus Christ. I love Ezekiel's prophecy. Ezekiel prophesied this, chapter 36, verse 26 and verse 27. He said something like this. A new heart will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you, and I will cause you to walk in my statutes and do them. Thank God we have been made alive with Christ. We have the exact same spirit that lives in Christ, and we have a brand new nature in Christ. I had a sin nature, but now I have a righteous nature. Praise God. I, have a, I had a defeated nature, but now I have a victorious nature. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And when you begin to understand, I not only have a new life, but I have a brand new nature, you're going to begin to live in a brand new way. Now, let's go ahead and read in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, and we'll begin to move from verse 6 through verse 10. He goes on to say this, and he has raised us up together. Notice that word, together. God raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. He says, not of works, lest any man should boast, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Praise God. So number one, I've got a brand new life. Number two, I have a brand new nature. I was a sinner, but now I'm a saint. My nature was to sin before I got saved. I came by sin honestly. But now that I'm born again, praise God, I've got the spirit of Jesus in me. And just like it was my nature to live sinfully, now it's my nature to live righteously. Praise God. So I've got a brand new life. I've got a brand new nature. But I have a brand new position in Christ. Notice what it says there. It says, He raised us up and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's your new position. You've been raised up. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20 calls us ambassadors for Christ. Now, Paul talks about this in Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 through verse 4. And he says, if you then be risen with Christ. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. 
Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth, for you are dead and your life is hidden with Christ in God. He goes on in verse 4 and says, When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, you shall appear with him in glory. Thank God we've been risen with Christ. And we not only have a brand new life, a brand new nature, but we've got a brand new position, right? We were sinners. We came by sin honestly. We were sinners by nature, but now we've been made righteous. We're the very righteousness of God in Christ. Jesus took our sin on the cross, and when we believe on him, God gave us his righteousness. Praise God. So just like it was my nature to live wrong, it's my nature now to live right. Hallelujah. Praise God. I got a brand new nature and I've got a brand new position. I'm seated with him. I'm no longer under the weather. I'm no longer under the circumstances. I'm no longer under the dominion of the devil. I'm no longer under Satan's power and Satan's dominion. I'm under, I've come, I've left the reign of sin and death. I've come into the reign of grace and righteousness by faith in Jesus. And now I reign with Jesus and I reign as a king. That's what 2 Corinthians, or actually Romans 5 verse 17 says in the Amplified Translation. I love the Amplified Translation of Romans chapter 5, verse 17. So we left the reign of sin and death. We came into a reign of grace and righteousness, and now sin no longer has dominion over us. Praise God, but we reign with Jesus. We have authority over the devil, and we have authority over all of his works. You know, a lot of people are blaming God for a lot of stuff, but when you find out what Jesus has done and that Jesus is living on the inside of you and he's given you authority and he raised you up and made you sit together in heavenly places, you can live in a brand new way. That's why Paul said, Sis, if you're risen with Christ, don't set your affection. Set your affection on things above. Seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. But not only do we have a new position, we have a brand new hope. Let's look back here at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7. seven. I love this. He said he did this so that in the ages to come, he might show to us the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. You know, if you study the Bible and you look at it closely, you can find out grace was working even before the foundation of the world. Paul says that God called us with a holy calling and saved us according to his grace. Amen? You find it goes through, through our life when we believed on Jesus, we were saved by grace. Then we're to continue in the grace of God. We're to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But you'll find out right in this scripture that there is grace throughout eternity. Thank God. That, that's what I call amazing grace. grace. So we have a brand new hope in Christ. Now, when Paul is writing and defending the resurrection in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he says in verse 19, if in this life we have hope in, he says, in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But I'm thanking God that, you know what, my life doesn't end whenever I die. Praise God. If, if I die, if Jesus doesn't come first. You know, I've got plenty of friends that have passed on. They've went to be with Jesus. They've went to their eternal reward. And Paul says, those of us who believe on Jesus, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to verse 18, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, we believe that he's going to come again. And we believe that those who've died in Christ, he's going to bring with him. And there's going to be a great getting up morning. There's going to be a great resurrection day. And thank God, he says, we are not to sorrow like unbelievers who have no hope. 
Thank God we have hope in Jesus Christ. You say, Pastor, that's hard. Let me tell you, my daddy went home to be with Jesus when I was just 17 years old. By the grace of God, God gave me the last day of his life with him, and we had a really wonderful day. But later that evening when my mother and I found him, my mama said, what are we going to do? I said, Mama, Daddy is in heaven with Jesus, and we're going to live, and we're going to live for Jesus. Praise God. And one day, I believe that I'm going to meet my father again in heaven. Now, I've had some good friends that have went to be with Jesus. And you know what? We may miss them, but we don't have to sorrow like ungodly people, like worldly people that have no hope because we have hope in Jesus. We have hope. In the resurrection, Paul's talking about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He says, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? He says, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He goes on to say in verse 58, he says, wherefore, be steadfast, be unmovable, be always abounding in the work of the Lord. What should we do if we lose someone close to us? We need to thank God for the victory that we have in Jesus. We need to thank God for the hope that we have in Jesus. And we need to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. We need to keep believing Jesus like never before. If there's ever a a time that you need to believe in the resurrection. It's when you've lost someone that's close to you. If they had faith in Jesus, if we believe Jesus died and rose again, we believe that he's going to come again. The dead in Christ are going to rise first, Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. So thank God we got hope. How many of you glad you got hope in Jesus? So we've got new life. We got a new nature. We got a new position. We got new hope. We have a new system. How, how many of you glad we got a new system? I'm glad that we're operating by a new system. It's called grace. If there wasn't grace, Pastor Lawson wouldn't be here. I wouldn't make it, you know? Pastor Lawson has not been the best boy all the time. Praise God. Neither have you been the best little boy or girl. Amen? It's not about what you do. It's about what he did. I'm so glad. It's about what Jesus did and not what I did. But Paul talks about this. If you want to turn with me to Romans chapter 4, the very last verse. I love this verse. It says, who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. You know, a lot of people live on the backside of the cross. In other words, they're always talking about get saved, don't sin, repent, don't sin. That's like the church I grew up in. Repent, 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 and don't sin. But when you get on the other side of the cross, how he was raised for our justification, you find out there's life and there's purpose in Christ. There's something you get to do, not that you have to do. And it changes how you live your life. Now, Paul goes on in Romans chapter 5. Listen to what he says in the first two verses. He says, therefore, being justified. I like what he says. In the, I like it in the New King James Version. It says, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God we've been justified, just like we never sinned. We have peace with God. He says then in verse 2, by whom? By Jesus. We also, he says, have access by faith in the grace wherein we stand. And he says, we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. You see, when you look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, the very next verse, he says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. We've got a new system. It's called grace. Amen? And faith. It's God's grace. That's what happened at the cross. Jesus died and he paid for our sins. But now, because he's been resurrected, we put faith in him. And we put faith in him. It's no longer about what we did. It's about what he's done. It's grace and faith. Now, he says we have access by faith into grace. 
and we stand in grace. So when you're praying and believe in God for something, don't say, I did this and I did that and I did something else. I prayed and I was kind to my neighbor and I gave at church and I read my Bible and I, you know, don't, don't, don't talk about all the things that you've done because nothing you've done really compares with what Jesus has done. And so you stand, you have access by faith into grace, and you say, Jesus, you took my sin, you took my anxiety, you took my sickness, you took my poverty, and you gave me righteousness, and you gave me peace, and you gave me health and healing, and you gave me provision. Thank you, Jesus. So don't look at what you've done, look at what he's done and start thanking God for it. So this new system is called grace and faith. We have access by faith into grace and we stand in grace and we hope in the glory, we hope in the good things of God. Now I want you to jump forward a little bit to verse eight through verse 11. I wanna show you some things here really quickly. He says, but God commended, God demonstrated, God made known his love toward us. He revealed it in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. How many of you glad that Jesus died for you when you were making all the wrong choices in doing all the wrong things? That includes all of us in this room. We've all made bad choices at times. We've all sinned, right, and come short of the glory of God. But Jesus died for us in that state. Now he goes on and says, much more than, I love this, in verse nine, he says, being now justified by his blood. Everybody say justified. justified. We're justified, he says in verse one, by faith. He says in verse nine, we're justified by his blood. We're justified by faith in what Jesus has done. He says, we shall be saved from wrath. If God loved me when I was a sinner, how much more does he love me since I've been saved? We're going to be delivered. We're going to be saved from wrath. You know, a lot of churches, they preach, you know, get saved, don't sin. But after you get saved, boy, if you go do that, now you're in trouble. They have lots of mercy for sinners, but not much mercy for saints. Listen, Pastor Lawson needs to get a little more of that mercy working in his life. Sometimes I think, my God, what's wrong with their brain? That's right. There's something wrong with their brain. Their spirit might be okay, but their brain still needs some work. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just telling you the truth, amen, I work with, I work with church people, okay, sheep. Uh -huh. I'm going to tell you, I'll tell you some things, but I'll stop right now. All right, I'll save that for another day. Okay, so he says, we're going to be saved from wrath through him. Now he says, if, look at this in verse 10, for if when we were enemies, before you got saved, before you were believed on Jesus, before you were living for God, you were reconciled. You were made right with God by the death of his son. Much more, now that you have been reconciled. I want you to look closely at verse 10. We shall be saved by his life. I thought I was saved by his death. Now he says I'm saved by his life. Well, in his death, he was delivered for our offenses right? But he was raised again for his, for our justification, Romans 4, 25, right? So I'm not only saved by his death, by the blood that he shed for my sin and for my forgiveness, for my salvation, but I'm also saved by his new nature. So when you really understand the gospel, you understand that I have been saved that I am being saved, and that I trust that I'm going to be saved when Jesus comes again. All three of those things are true in the gospel. It's past, present, and future. And it's all by Christ's work. But I love this. Not only am I saved by his death, but I'm saved by his life. Jesus is living on the inside of me. And not only so, he says in verse 11, but we joy, we rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. That word for atonement right there in Romans 5 verse 11 is the Greek word katalage. And it means it's, it's an a exchange of money, like money changers, right? Somebody the other day, they translated my book 
The Power and Life of the Word, one of the first books that I wrote, they translated into Liberian. And they came here and they gave me a, a, a copy of my book that they, they printed in Liberian, The Power and Life of the Word. And they gave me 100 euros. Now, when I take that 100 euros, I'm going to take it and I'm going to exchange it for dollars so that I, I can, exp, so that I, you know, so that I can use the money here, right? Now, when, generally, when you go to the money changers, they take, right, from you. They, they take a little bit of a commission. And they, they like to really take advantage of you in that, right? But in, in the grace of God, you get the good end of the exchange. For your sin, you got his righteousness. For your sickness, you got his health. For your, your anxiety, you got his peace. For your lack, he gave you his provision, right? Whatever you need, Jesus gave it to you. There's been an exchange. You know, we're building these churches in India. And really, we give $2,000, and then it's matched with $2,000, you know, by another group. And, and then... In COVID, they lost the money changer to change us into rupees in India. So they found another money changer. He is in the Middle East. And he has an oil business in the Middle East. He said, listen, I don't want to take from you. I want to add to you. So he adds another 25%. So our 2,000 becomes 5,000. Then the Indian church, they have to tie. They have 5,000. And then they do the labor. Did you know most of these churches, we've, we've paid for 22 of them so far. Most of these churches are the only Christian church in their community. And if, and if they have 35 people or 40 people, when they, when they, after they build the church, they end up with 70 or 80 people. It just doubles. And a lot of them, they dig a water well behind the church. Now, I believe for every one of these churches that, that we invest in, I believe that we'll have at least 10 people saved every year till Jesus comes. Now, I told one of my donors that, and my donors told me, no, I think there's going to be more. And then I told Bobby Crow because he was just here, and Bobby, I told him that the venue that we're using, there, all these churches are, are salvation preaching, Holy Spirit preaching churches. And he said, Bobby told me the same thing. He said, no, Pastor Lawson, I believe that a lot more than 10 people will be saved every year for every church that you build in India. Now, we're not only doing that in India. We're doing stuff here. Praise God. We're preaching the gospel like all over the world. Amen. Praise God. And I thank God we have the privilege of doing that. We're investing in the gospel. Amen. But that's a good side of an exchange. Well, we got the good side because we had sin, but Jesus gave us righteousness. We had death, but he gave us life. We had anxiety, but he gave us peace. We had poverty, but he gave us wealth. We had sickness, but he gave us health. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God the cross. Did you know the cross is called the great exchange? Not only do we have this new system called grace and faith, we have brand new faith in Christ. I love what he says. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. We have brand new faith in Jesus. Did you realize that? You've been given the very exact same faith as Jesus Christ. I love the verse in Galatians 2, verse 20. It says, for I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We've got a brand new faith in Jesus. We have the exact same faith as Jesus. If you understand that you have the spirit of Christ, you have the fruit of the spirit, which is faith. You have the faith of Jesus working in you right now, everyone who has been born of God. My last point is this. Not only do we have new life, praise God, we have a new nature. We have a new position, right? We have new hope. We have a new system. Amen? We have new faith. But we have this. We are a new creation in Christ Jesus. 
And I love these verses in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 through verse 21. Paul says something like this. He says, therefore, if any person be in Christ, the same has become a new creation. Old things are passed away, and all things have become new. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself and given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ. Listen to this verse, verse 19. Not imputing the trespasses of the world to them. The sins of the entire world have already been paid for. But you know what we got to do? We've got to believe it so we can receive it. And he's committed to them the word of reconciliation. He says then in verse 20, Now then, we as ambassadors for Christ beseech you, we beg of you, be reconciled to God. I beg of you today, if you are not right with God, get right with God. Jesus already did all the work. Jesus already paid all the price. Do you know what? The Christian life is not hard to live. It's impossible to live without Jesus. Amen. Do you know the Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. But Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Because when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it's no longer you living, but it's Jesus living his life through you. I love how Paul finishes up 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. He says this, For God has made him, Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the very righteousness of God in him. You see, Jesus became a sin offering for us. Jesus paid the sin debt for us so that now we can receive the gift of God's righteousness. Now, I want to do one more thing before I step off this stage today. I want every person to bow your head. I want everybody to close your eyes. And I want to ask everybody in this room a question. Are you ready to meet God? Have you received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord, as your personal Savior? Do you know today, if you would die, that you would have spent eternity with our Father God and our Lord Jesus Christ? And if you don't, I want you just to raise up your hand, and I just want you to be honest with me right now. Just raise up your hand. Just Raise your hand. If anyone's here, you say, Pastor, I don't know Jesus as my Lord. I see one hand there. I don't know Jesus as my Savior. I'm, anyone else, just raise your hand right now. And I'm going to ask everyone then to pray with me. The person that raised your hand, I want you to talk to those who brought you today, and I want you to tell them that I'm surrendering my life to the Lord Jesus Christ, and I've given my life to him. So right now, I just want everyone to pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is your Son. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. And I believe that you raised him from the dead on the third day and made him Lord. And right now, I surrender my life to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Can I share my conclusion with you? My conclusion is really simple. Surrender. If you only knew how good it would be, you never would have waited. God bless you. I love you. Right now, we're going to receive tithes and offerings. If you'd like to give, there are offering envelopes in the back of the seat. You can grab an envelope and fill it out. After service, just take it to the giving stations by the door there, and you can drop it in the slots. You can also text to give or give online. I want to welcome everyone who's watching online today as well, and also anyone online. If you need prayer, we actually have prayer ministers on the phones ready to pray for you um, today. Um, the scripture I have for you, I actually 
I'm God put it on my heart right before I heard my dad just preach it just five minutes ago, but it's from Romans 5, verse 8. It says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us, even in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And I love that it says God demonstrates his love for us. So God isn't done demonstrating his love. He keeps demonstrating it. And, and the way God demonstrates his love to us is through what he gives us. And he gave us his very best. He gives us his only begotten son, Jesus. And I believe that today we can actually demonstrate our love, our faith towards God by giving as well. And I believe that as you give today, just give out of your love for the Father, amen? Just give out of your love for what Jesus did for you. And I know that as you give today and sow into this ministry, this ministry is preaching the full gospel, preaching who we are in Christ, pre preaching who, um, with the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe that as you give today, it's gonna touch the heart of Jesus, amen? And you can't ever outgive God. He's gonna keep demonstrating his love for you. And he's not done demonstrating it yet. Amen. So as you give, just give out of that love that you have for Jesus and for what God has done for you today. Amen. Let's all stand up. I want to close for everyone in prayer today. Right now, our prayer ministers can come forward. Um, and my dad just um, did a, a prayer for salvation today. But I just feel like there's some people here today, maybe, maybe you, you are saved, but you just feel disconnected from God. You know, right there in Romans 5, in verse 10, I love that my dad preached this. He said, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Jesus is alive and we can be completely saved, completely reconciled. And I was thinking of something that happened this morning. Um, right before I came to church here, it was around 6 a.m., we, we gave our 10-year-old son Fisher his, his uh, Easter gift. We gave him this tiny little um, Atari game. He loves gaming and he has like really high end game stuff, but we bought him a vintage. Some of you might've stopped at Atari. I stopped at Nintendo 64, but um, we gave him this tiny, it's like a tiny little TV and a little thing connected to it. But right as he opened the package, he cut the cord to the little hand, handheld set. And that word reconciled, it means to be reconnected to God. And he was really upset because he was really excited to get this, you know, the very first game system that ever was made and to play on it this tiny little thing and he didn't realize that you know back in the day things were wired and um you know some of you might feel that you aren't really connected to god but i have good news that jesus can reconnect you. i told fisher don't worry we're gonna have lunch today with my brother andrew he's he's one of the best engineers in the world he builds you know quarter billion dollar natural gas plants i said i think he can fix it and maybe you feel disconnected from God, you feel disconnected from the Father. I have good news from you. The greatest spiritual engineer is still fixing things today. He's still reconnecting people to the Father. So maybe you feel like you've you're without hope, man. Just right out of the package, you are disconnected. I have good news that Jesus can reconnect you. All you have to do is come to him and pray. So in a moment, if you want to be reconnected to God, I want you to come forward and pray with our, our prayer ministers today. They'll pray for you. Also, if anyone here today hasn't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, man, that's one of the, the first things Jesus did for his believers. After he died, he rose again. One of the first things he gave the church was the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that firepower, that electricity that runs straight from the the Father to you. So if you want to receive that electric electric power of the Holy Ghost, you can receive that today. If you need prayer for anything else today, I want you to come forward. Man, there is so much hope. Jesus is alive. As I was just thinking about that fact that Jesus is alive, man, I was just filled with hope. I just thought about all the people, every single one of you today, you have hope for whatever situation you're facing because Jesus is alive. You have eternal life. You have hope. You are never without hope. Amen. So if you need someone to, to agree with you, to pray with you, just come forward today. And I believe that God will meet you right where you're at. So God, I thank you for this church. I thank you for everyone here, everyone watching online, Lord. I just thank you that because Jesus died for us, because he rose again, we can be reconciled. We can be reconnected to God. Even people who just feel like right off the bat, right out of the package, they were cut, they were estranged, they were, they were shut off. I just think that they can be made right and reconciled and reconnected through the blood of Jesus right now. So I just think that right now, Jesus, you are doing miracles in this place. People are being reconnected to the 
Father, people's bodies are being healed. People's minds are being healed right now. I just rebuke anguish. I rebuke anxiety. I rebuke torment right now in Jesus' name. I just think that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, it dwells in us. It's here in this place. So I just think that there is resurrection, eternal life, power, eternal hope right now in this place. And we just pray it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, amen, amen. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Amen. Go and just uh, share the good news with someone today. We love you and see you all soon.